Hi, everyone. OK, let's jump in. The title of this talk is PCEI, which I'm sure none of you know what that means, so I'll explain it at the edge. And uh, this blueprint is part of Linux Foundation Edge, Akraino project. Uh, and the blueprint uh, is led by Oleg Berzin. He's the pro uh, project technical lead. He's a fellow uh, of technology and architecture at Equinix. So this is really his brainchild. He couldn't be here. So I'm going to try and do my best to, to represent the blueprint. And as Tina said, this was submitted to the Etsy Mac Hackathon. And uh, it was the, the winner about two, two and a half weeks ago. So what you're going to see is a really practical implementation of edge computing. So what is PCEI? PCEI, like I said, is part of Linux Foundation Edge Akraino. It stands for Public Cloud Edge Interface. And really, the idea of PCEI is to specify a set of open APIs for cloud edge instances. And the cloud edge is defined as an edge that is closer to the cloud than the user. So you, you've seen all kinds of definitions of the edge, right? This is sort of closer to the cloud, not really device-centric, but in a data center or a colo. And the cloud edge exposes APIs towards the public cloud. So public cloud service provider, instances uh, at the edge. And the whole idea is that the edge and cloud are complementary. So it's not like the cloud can replace the edge or the edge can replace the cloud. They're complementary. And for that reason, the thinking is that the cloud edge deployments offer many opportunities for collaboration by exposing the network capabilities to provide value-added services. And on the right-hand side, you see the two uh, pictures. So cloud edge and um, cloud workload. So your application can straddle all the way from the edge to the public cloud. And same thing on the infrastructure. Your infrastructure can straddle from the cloud edge to cloud infrastructure. And we are going to see examples of both. So uh, this blueprint has been progressing for almost two Two, maybe even longer, two years now. And this is a logical representation of the blueprint. And then I'll get into sort of more details and show the physical uh, structure. So we have two edge sites, cloud edge sites, and one public cloud site. So what you see uh, at below is the physical infrastructure. So the physical structure const constitutes of Equinix Metal, which is bare metal as a service. Um, Equinix Network Edge, which is networking. Uh, through Equinix Network Edge, you can get things like firewalls, routers, load balancers on demand. And Fabric, which is on-demand cloud connectivity. And then Azure Express Route is the other side of the cloud connectivity on the Azure side. So that's the infrastructure that was used. And on that, two clusters were created. You will see one in Silicon Valley, one in Dallas. Uh, and then uh, there was also a service used on the, on the public cloud on Azure. And cluster one ran 5G. So what's running on cluster one is the 5G RAN, 5G core, and location services, and IoT, an IoT device. And some things are simulated, like the core is real, but everything else is actually simulated. The radio is simulated as well. Site number two is running the multi-access edge computing application, the MEC application, which is IoT Edge. And the public cloud is running IoT Hub. All of this is fully automated. The orchestration is fully automated. So literally, with a click of a button, the whole thing spins up. Normally, this might take you. Um, uh, a sort of a regular user of a couple of months to set up. So by automation, we are cutting those couple of months into a couple of hours. So the same thing in sort of words. 
Um, we are using the PCI Blueprint and the MEC Location API service to demonstrate orchestration of a federated MEC infrastructure. It federates across two MEC sites and a public cloud site. We are going to show bare metal interconnection, virtual routing um, for both the MEC site and the public cloud sites, IAS and SaaS, fully automated, uh, and it's across two providers, 5G control and user plane functions, and then the deployment of the MEC application in which in this case is IoT, so the IoT application making use of 5G access, and it's distributed across geographic locations and across hybrid uh, MEC, edge cloud and public cloud SaaS infrastructure. So with that, I'm going to, I'm going to dive in into some details. So maybe I'll, I'll just come here easier. So what, what you see on the left-hand side is site one. That's in Silicon Valley. In Silicon Valley, you see three metal servers. One metal server is running the UE and GNODB simulator. And for those of you who don't know 5G, that's just um, the user uh, equipment, which could be a phone. So it's a simulator for a phone. And GNODB is the radio area network. So it's a simulated user equipment and G node B. The IoT data generator, the simulated IoT device is also running on that server. Then we have another metal server, and all of these are running Kubernetes, by the way. So the second server with Kubernetes is running the 5G UPF. So I'll, I'll show a slide on this, but 5G can be broken up into uh, 5G core can be broken up into a user plane and a control plane. And the user plane is the element through which data flows, and control plane is, is as the name suggests, it's a control plane. So this runs the UPF, the user plane function, and it runs the location API server. So because in, in 5G, one of the key things you get is you can get the location of your, your device um, or um, in this case, IoT device, which can be very important. All of that is connect. All the metal servers are connected over an IP network. The third metal server with Kubernetes is running the 5G control plane. And we'll see more details. So that's site one. Site two, which is connect, site one and site two are connected over Equinix Fabric. And we are calling that the MEC Federation data plane. And that's not really been specified in the standards, so um, Oleg is trying to push that back into the standards. The second site, the site in Dallas, is running uh, one metal server with Kubernetes, and that is running Azure IoT Edge, which in this case is the edge computing or the MEC application, multi-access edge computing application. That, in turn, is connected over Equinix Fabric to a public cloud site, um, Azure in this case. And Azure is running um, IoT Hub. So as you see, fairly complex um, environment, actually you know, quite representative of a real life environment. And at the top, you have the orchestrator. So it, it's either called the MEC Federation Broker or Orchestrator, however you want to call it, and it's orchestrating the left-hand side, the fabric in the middle, the right-hand side, everything fully automated, like I, I mentioned. Um, so that's, that's this blueprint. Yeah. What, what does the use case do? It does three things. The first thing it does is setting up the sites, the infrastructure. So it's setting up the 5G provider. And in this case, another thing I, I didn't mention is you could have the 5G provider and the edge computing application provider be two separate companies. They could be two separate entities. So you have the 5G operator. And what we are doing in the orchestration stage is we are setting up bare metal servers. We are setting up Kubernetes, fully automated. Then we are setting up the MEC Federation Internet Connect provider, that's Equinix Fabric, and that creates the private MEC Federation data plane connection. 
And then we set up the right-hand side site, which is the MEC provider. There we set up bare metal, we orchestrate the bare metal, we orchestrate Kubernetes on top, we orchestrate the virtual router that connects both to the 5G provider and to the public cloud, and then we orchestrate express route to Azure. So that's step one. Step two, we orchestrate the network functions and the application. So on the left-hand side, we orchestrate 5G functions, control plane functions, user plane functions, MEC location API server, uh, and IoT uh, Edge. And on the right-hand side, uh, sorry, the IoT data generation. On the right-hand side, it's IoT Edge uh, Gateway and uh, Azure IoT, Azure uh, IIS with IoT Hub. And then when all of that is set up, then we actually run the service. So that stage, we register with the 5G network, the UE, the user equipment with the 5G network, um, send encoded IoT sensor data, uh, then we enrich it with location services data, and then finally we um, send it to the IoT hub on Azure where you can uh, actually see it, you can visualize it. So this shows 5G, and those who are familiar with 5G, this will look very familiar. For those who aren't, I'll maybe just spend a, a minute explaining it. So what you see on the left-hand side is the user equipment and the GNode B. So like I said, the user equipment can be a phone, it can be an IoT device, it can be a HoloLens, anything generating, connecting to 5G. The G node B is the radio area network. That's the radio part and the lower level protocols uh, that go along with it. Uh, that then connects to the UPF. UPF is part of an entity called the 5G core. So it's the core network that connects you to um, either MEC applications or to the data network, to the internet or whatever as the case may be. So the user plane is, is there, and that's how the data flows, the green arrow and then the purple arrow. Um, on the top, you see the 5G control plane. The 5G control plane is quite rich. There are lots and lots of functions. Uh, I'm not going to go through them, but uh, they all need to be, you at least have to have what's called the AMF and the SMF to be minimally operable, and then many of the other functions are required for full functionality. So all of that <coughs> was orchestrated, and you see the network, some of the details of the network as well. And that was then sent over Equinix Fabric to the Dallas site, to the Dallas server, where the Mac, Mac application resides. And the Kubernetes stack that was deployed on each server, you can see that as well. You have you know, Kubernetes with Multus and Flannel, um, and all of these applications are packaged up as Helm charts. You do see a couple of virtual machines here, and we, uh, as you know, Kubernetes and virtual machines are not incompatible. You can use virtual machines with Kubernetes using technologies such as KubeWirt. So, um, yeah, we don't use it different technologies, it's all through Kubernetes. So that shows the, the 5G deployment. Uh, this shows the flow of data from the user equipment, the IoT device in this case, all the way to Azure. IoT uh, hub, IoT hub. So what it's showing is that the sensor data is sent through the UPF, through the MEC Federation data plane, which is the connectivity between the two sites, to the MEC application, which in this case is IoT Edge. So that data is sent. Then the IoT Edge application then says, oh, I need the location data. So it then sends uh, a request to the location API server gets the location information, and then enriches the data with the location information, and sends all of that, so temperature, humidity, pressure, and la latitude, longitude. All of that is sent to the IoT hub on Azure, 
where it can be displayed. So this, uh, I'm, you know, don't be scared. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. Um, this shows the orchestration, how the orchestration is done. So what we are using are Linux Foundation networking uh, open source projects for the orchestration piece. One element we are using is called EMCO, Edge Multi-Cluster Orchestrator. It's a way to orchestrate network services using cloud-native network functions or MEC applications using cloud-native applications across multiple Kubernetes clusters. So that's EMCO. We use another piece from Linux Foundation Networking called CDS, uh, Controller Design Studio. It's part of a, a project called ONAP. And that's used for um, infrastructure orchestration and configuration management. So those are the two pieces we use. We use Kamunda on top for um, sort of service orchestration. And that talks to either APIs on top or to a GUI. Both are available. Um, the combination is able to do everything I mentioned. If you attended my earlier talk this morning about Nephew, we are actually going to start integrating Nephew in this because Nephew provides a very nice declarative intent, which frankly is missing from this blueprint right now. So anyway, the orchestration is agnostic of the domain, so you can have different different domains. Some domains may need, you know, Helm charts like the IoT. Uh, edge, or the location services component, or the 5G core. Some may need Ansible, like to deploy Kubernetes, we use Ansible. Um, and to bring up metal and to bring up fabric, we use Terraform. So we use different, different southbound technologies depending on what's needed. And the cluster config, Helm charts, Ansible playbooks, Terraform are all in a Git. So it's all uh, DevOps, CI, CD flow. Um, so I think that covers the orchestration. Yeah, so the idea is orchestration using infra as code. So it's uniform, it's model free. The orchestrator does not have to know the intricacies of the underlying domain. The state is kept external in a Git repo and through Git it's all DevOps driven. The MEC location API implementation is as a uh, Kubernetes application. It's through a Helm chart. And the Helm chart is onboarded using the orchestrator and then orchestrated um, onto Kubernetes. So that's what this shows. And finally, it's uh, just a summary again of the end-to-end -end flow. We saw this picture already. But what it's showing is that the yellowish arrow goes all the way from user equipment, the IoT device, to IoT Edge. The green arrow is where the IoT Edge queries the location server and enriches the data with, with location, uh, the latitude, longitude. And then the black arrow shows, black or purple, I'm not able to say black, shows how that information is then sent to IoT Hub on Azure. And then the blue, uh, blue solid line shows the BGP peering um, between the two sites. And just to sort of complete the picture, uh, you can see the color-coded key at the bottom. The metal network edge fabric are all uh, Equinix. The orchestrator is from Arna Networks, the place where I, company where I work. The green is from HC Mac. The gray free 5GC is an open source 5G core, and the yellow is Azure, uh, Microsoft Azure services. All of this has been contributed to the open source, so if this is of interest to you, you can, this, uh, my presentation is um, up, uploaded already, so if you are interested, you can go to these places and, and see what's going on. And, now I'm going to fire up a demo. The demo does have Oleg's voice, so I'm going to play it and, and just uh, sort of let him 
show the demo. Oops, I think I came on lucky. Hmm, it's not letting me. Do I have to do something on the audio? Okay, yeah, I can. Let's see. It's. Mac Airbook speakers, Exatron Scalar D, USB audio device. The USB? An edge cloud provider. Yeah. And the other one is the 5G access. What you see on the screen is the use case where the two providers, one is the uh, Mac provider, um, an edge cloud provider, and the other one is the 5G access provider. Um, federate their resources by way of um, um, providing services to each other. The Mac service operator provides access to a Mac application and Mac resources, and the 5G operator provides um, 5G access and location API service for Mac. Both are uh, interconnected using the Mac Federation data plane across the global fabric. Our use cases proceed in, th in three stages, the infrastructure orchestration stage, the uh, 5G network function and Mac service and application deployment stage, and the end-to-end -end operation of an IoT application. First, we orchestrate the topology using our network's AMCAP system, and we um, uh, examine what the, po the top created topology. At uh, the next step, we will uh, examine the input into that topology. So the intent-based input describes uh, various components of the um, uh, solution. Uh, that we're going to create, and those components are um, described in this XML file, a JSON file, and then we launch the um, topology creation, and then uh, we'll see uh, that the topology ha has been launched and has been orchestrated. In order to see the orchestration, we'll first look at the Azure side and look at um, the creation of the express route connection. So you see the express route connection is being created. You also see that uh, it is been provisioned, uh, has been provisioned on both the provider side and um, the Equinix and the uh, uh, Azure side. And we see the private BGP peering has been configured for that connection. Next, we'll look at the Equinix side to see uh, the, uh, the status of this uh, connection to Azure. It is active, and this connection um, is uh, enabled on the virtual device, uh, the virtual router, so we'll look at that. The virtual router is the VNF that Equinix provides, and then it is a Cisco uh, CSR1000D virtual router. It has been assigned an IP address, and uh, we can see the connection to Azure uh, Express Route is active uh, and provisioned. Uh, we see the parameters and the description of this connection here uh, in the Equinix portal. The next step for us is to look at the um, uh, status of the BGP peering after the creation of the VNF and creation of the B uh, private peering on the Azure side. We examine the routing table on the Azure uh, cloud and we'll see all the prefixes that are advertised from the um, VNF at Equinix to Azure and the prefixes that Azure advertises back. This is the components of cloud interconnect um, um, of the Mac service provider. Next step, we'll look at the uh, what orchestration uh, created for the Mac Federation data plane. So this is the, the connection that links the Silicon Valley and Dallas together where our providers are. The next step for us is to look at the bare metal service. So part of this orchestration, we orchestrated bare metal service and Equinix uh, data center in Dallas. So you'll see that. This server has uh, uh, the properties that I'm showing for memory and um, uh, CPU. And then it's connected to both connections, one to Azure and one back to the um, 5G service provider to, in Silicon Valley. So here we can log into the server and look at its configuration. 
So we also, as part of the orchestration, deployed Kubernetes on this server. And you see the um, basically the system pods running on the server for for the for the for the Kubernetes part. The next step in our uh, orchestration is the deployment of 5G functions in Mac service applications. So we'll see this next. And uh, this step consists of creating the 5G uh, functional deployment with the control plane, with the AMF, SMF, and all other functions, including the web UI, in order to log in and to see the status of the, uh, of the connections. We also see the, U the UPF cluster, uh, on which we deploy a, a, a standalone UPF distributed here in the uh, separate location, and also, also a simulated UE. So to examine that, we'll log in into the control plane cluster. We see all the pods for all the control plane functions up and running. We next um, uh, connect to the UPF uh, cluster. And in that UPF cluster, we also um, look at the UPF pod that has been deployed successfully. So you see this here at the free 5GC um, namespace, we see the UPF pod and also the Mac location API pod that we deployed as part of the orchestration. Next, we'll look in our simulated UE just to make sure that it has connected. So it has deployed. So the simulated UE is realized in a Kubernetes pod. We'll look at the status of the UE connection and on, on the free 5 gc web GUI, and we'll see that, that UE is connected. Uh, it is uh, correctly associated with the uh, IP address, uh, in this case, 10.1.0.9, and this is uh, what we can verify on our UE if we connect into the container and then look at the address um, uh, assigned for the mobile tunnel, and we'll see the same address on the mobile tunnel interface within the container. Uh, we can also verify um, uh, just basic traffic that can, we can send from the UE um, to the Mac server. So we, we do that by um, uh, specifying the source IP address of the mobile interface of the UE, and then the Mac server uh, IP address. And we see that the latency here between Silicon Valley, where the UE is, and Dallas is approximately 33 milliseconds uh, on the Equinix fabric. One other interesting test is that we can ping the internet directly from the UE, uh, from the mobile interface, and because the UPF is distributed, our local breakout delivers very low latency under 2 milliseconds. Um, next thing, we go to the Mac server to make sure that we have deployed the uh, 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 IoT application. This is the uh, Azure IoT Gateway, which is a cloud-native IoT application that runs in the pods, as you saw. Our next step is to actually show the end-to-end -end operation of the um, IoT application itself with the ability uh, to, to enrich uh, this application with location information. The first step is that the UE uh, and the IoT client will send the measurement data, uh, just the sensor data. The IoT Edge gateway will go back to the location API server, obtain the location information for that UE, and add that location information into the uh, IoT data. And then the, the uh, newly constructed uh, message with the sensor data and the um, location data will, uh, will be posted to the cloud. Here you see the end-to-end -end traffic path, so from the UE to the, to the IoT Edge Gateway, from IoT Edge Gateway to the Location API for location information, and then post it to the cloud. At this point, we will go back to the UE itself, um, again, looking at the, its, its IP address, and we will launch from within the UE container our reference IoT client. So this is the Python script, and we just basically launch it. In order to launch that uh, traffic, we need to uh, specify the Mac server IP address where the IoT Edge gateway is running, and the port on which it's listen listening, and that port is, is shown in the, um, in the display here. So once we specify the port, the IoT client will periodically start sending the data. And we see the first attempt was successful. It sends an encoded PDU um, uh, field, which encodes temperature, humidity, and pressure information into the message. Then we can look at the um, uh, Mac server across the Mac Federation connection and look at the log of the listening uh, IoT Edge um, uh, pod. You see that it receives the same data. It then um, goes to the location server, obtains the location information for the UE. It then adds that location information into the uh, message with the sensor data uh, and then 
post the uh, enriched message with temperature, humidity, and pressure, uh, longitude, longitude, and altitude information to the cloud. On the cloud, we can see that uh, it is received by the um, cloud um, uh, IoT SaaS backend, which is called uh, the IoT Hub in Azure, and we'll see the messages that are being received in the metrics uh, statistics for that um, for the device shadow. And you'll see that the count of messages is increasing as we expect it all the way through uh, this infrastructure that has been deployed and activated. Um, at this point, uh, we will also show the um, end-to-end uh, -end path that we realized here. So we constructed the MEC Federation environment with two providers connected via global fast. Okay, so that concludes the presentation. And, you know, even if you sort of put aside the 5G and, and some of those complexities, I hope that, that you, the big takeaway from this, which I hope you got is that there's a lot of talk about using hyperscaler um, clouds and private clouds and networks in between. And here's a, actually a practical implementation that shows all of that. So with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Questions? Yeah. Can I have a question? Yes. Yeah. So uh, I discussed with the uh, Volcano Engine people. Volcano Engine is uh, one of the CNCF project. So they are using uh, the TTOC application. Uh, they try to, so if you go back to one of the slides, you have the Azure there and the IoT applications. If they want to replace the IoT application as the TTOC application, but they found it's not quite, they can apply directly the Volcano Engine Edge Cloud to replace the Azure Edge Cloud. So is there any tips or uh, tutorial or, or advice to the team how they are gonna uh, slide in this uh, piece of blueprint? So they want to replace uh, Azure with? So there are two things. They want to replace the IoT application here as the TTOC. Second, they want to replace the Azure with uh, Volcano Engine Edge Cloud. Uh, yeah, it should be possible. So what has to be changed? Um, on the left-hand side, it, it's a Helm chart change. Mm -hmm. And on the right-hand side, currently it's a Terraform. And depending on what Volcano requires, maybe it's something different. So if they attend the next PCEI call, we can, we can go through it technically. And mm -hmm. we can sort of give them, I'm sure we can, uh, yeah. I can give Oleg a heads up and we can, we can resolve those issues. Yeah, it should be possible. Yeah, this relates to my other question. If you were here when I talk about the Elfage catalog, so we try to do the Kubernetes one-click de deployment, but we don't know whether the Kubernetes deployment file here is too complicated. We cannot do one-click, like how many Kubernetes extensions, the installation file you need. Do we actually can do one-click? We can do one-click. So in the orchestration, there are two steps, mm -hmm. design step and deployment. The design step has many, many steps because you have to onboard the, the CNF or the CNA, you have to um, put intent on how you want it orchestrated, but for deployment, it's, it's one click. You just click on it and it, it deploys, so yeah. Yeah, so uh, I would suggest you to double check of Elf Edge catalog to yeah. see whether the ham chart there okay. can be identical to this ham chart or any, anything like a joint things. Could be done. Okay, yeah. that's a great idea. That's yeah. a great idea. Yeah, yeah. Then yeah. it will be this blueprint will be the pioneer to yeah. use that. Mm -hmm. It'll be a lot more valuable then. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, I just saw a bricks for the questions and to introduce the Jade that you may have. <laughs>